Hey you guys, welcome to my channel and today I decided that I was going to do a video talking about relationships because I have been in a successful relationship for the last past two years and um, I decided to just shed some light or some secrets or some tips, advice, whatever you want to call it to people out there who are looking for relationships or are, or are currently in a relationship that you're not sure about or you're doubting or anything like that I decided to make a video so I've been in a relationship for two years um not the best in the sense of um we've had plenty of issues nothing too big in the sense as far as like cheating or trust anything like that but more so big because of the fact that um we're completely different people. We have, I think, a three-year gap in our age. Um, our drive is completely different. Our styles, our attitudes, we are, like, really pretty much the opposites. And um, in ways, the saying is true, opposites attract. But then in other ways, it's not true because you will want somebody that in some areas of your life, your core values, you want a person that can clash with you, like, you know what I'm saying, agree with you. So the other day at work, I was asked, how do I make a two-year relationship work? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, how do you stay in a relationship for two years? Or just how do you remain in a relationship for two years? So to answer that question, to make any relationship work, you have to fight for it. You have to, one, fight for it, want it, work for it, and more important than anything, be honest. Um, you have to have time. And what I mean by time with that person, <clears throat> you can't talk to this person 24-7 for a month and say, oh my God, I love this person, I know everything about them. No. Me, me and my partner, we've been together for, like I said, two years, and the first year was completely friends friends that's it we didn't kiss only thing we did was hug no sexual contact or anything because we both were with someone else and we literally been through a lot together i was with my ex was in the military and her ex was locked up so we we remained we were friends for a year so initially we became close because not only were we somewhat in the same situation but we started to talk and started to be cool, hang out. Now, for that year, I never was emotionally attached to her. I didn't really give too much details about my relationship. I didn't really go into details about my past, you know, as far as things that bother me. Because I honestly feel that when you start spending time with someone else, when you start opening up to someone else, you open up a door. You crack a door for cheating. You know what I'm saying? And um, by me already knowing that, I kept our relationship completely as a friendship for the first year. And um, after we both had time to get our exes out of our systems, then we focused more towards us being more than just friends. And so we went from friends to, to best friends to boo things. And we had boo things titled for like, almost a year too um we've only been official since july so going on three and a half months we've been actually official and um like i said that whole year first i've grown to know her like i can know that i can depend on her and she knows that she can depend on me not even like in a relationship wise but as a friend as a person i know her as a person, she knows me, so to, to transition from being boo to relationship wasn't hard. It wasn't something I had to think on. It wasn't nothing. I knew right away, okay, I'm tired of being your boo thing because I want to be more serious. I want, like I said on my videos, I'm transitioning. So now I need to transition from being a boo thing to being a girlfriend, from being one, you know, I needed to grow, you know. So that was in one area I needed to grow from being a boo thing. Well, from not having a title to having a title. Boom. <laughs> My next step is putting the ring on A. <laughs> but um, 
so yeah so within these last three and a half months that we actually been a legitimate couple um a lot of issues was addressed as far as trust because it's hard to kind of snap out of that being best friends to where a lot of things didn't bother me or I didn't have that much say so and she didn't have that much say so uh say so because we're boo things and we kind of had a little thing to where you could do what you want to do what you couldn't do you know so now that we are a relationship sometimes it's hard to transition reason being is because we were friends for so long so sometimes we do lose track of what's important. For example, um, some things that I don't know may offend her or get under her skin does now because we're together and vice versa. Um, I'm a, I tend to be a little more emotional now because I want more. So now my attitude can be a little more snappy, <clears throat> but it's because I want to better. We're a couple, and I believe that if you're if you if you're in a relationship, yeah, y'all need to have a dynasty. Y'all need to want more for each other. Y'all needs to be a team. But anyways, enough about me. My tips as far as how to make a relationship last is y'all both need to deep down your core values. Which means when all the glitz and glamour is gone, when the looks are gone, to me, that's what holds a relationship. You have to want to do better, not only for yourself, but for the other person. Don't love somebody to death. It's good to love them, but don't love them to death because what happens if you're married for 35 years and your spouse dies and then you're left not knowing nothing because you depend on the person. So it's okay to depend on a person, but don't depend on them with your life. Um, another thing is honesty is a big part of the relationship, but also holding back certain things is also key. Um, I would say be 90% honest. The other 10%, that doesn't mean that you got to go out there and be a little whore and then act like you St. Mary Claire. No. What I'm talking about is have a little bit to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell your partner everything. Kind of still remain yourself because before that person, you were an individual. So always keep your originality to yourself, but now you live your life as a team. So living your life as a team, you know, it's kind of good to keep that one or the couple things that you do on the side. Um, little hobbies, always try to keep a hobby. Always try to find something that, that you can do by yourself. Find a method that satisfies you, that gets you, get you off in a sense, if it's singing, writing, shopping, whatever, always have that one thing that keep, keeps you centered. Because if you depend on that person for everything, because you're going to lose friends. You know, when you're in a relationship, you lose friends because I know I did. <laughs> Not necessarily friends, but, you know, I have my little side friends that could, you know, be booze or could like me and because I value my relationship more than I value their friendship because we when I mean when I mean by their friendship because I just met them not so long ago and I was like, okay for me to transition and have a positive relationship I need to eliminate everybody who's not right for me meaning if I know that you like me and I'm in a relationship why would I continue to talk to you or hang out because that's not gonna do nothing but keep things stirring up and then eventually it's gonna explode so that's one key is to eliminate other people out of your relationship. Another really good thing that I like besides us being friends for a year or having time for a year, um, being honest with each other 90% of the time is another thing is that <clears throat> we are private people. Um, because of her situation, we're private. And another thing is because all my other relationships, I broadcasted them. Regardless, it was on fa when I was on when MySpace was hot, I was in a relationship uh, with someone, and when Twitter, well, Facebook was hot, I was in a relationship with someone, and I had their pictures. We we both had pictures of each other on our page and things like that. But I go through my moments as like any female, or anybody, where it might be a verse to a song that I like, and I put the verse on there, and people gonna automatically assume I'm talking about the person that I'm with. You know, if I'm having a bad day and I just feel like being a little bitch, they're going to think, okay, something's going on. So they're going to automatically call my phone, text my phone, inbox me, write all over my wall, go to the person that I'm talking to, write on their wall, 
inbox don't call them and it's nothing and i'm like okay what's going on or the person that i'm with is like what's going on with you what you know what's the matter i'm like nothing but well, why are everybody doing this and that is third so to eliminate that um this relationship i don't have any pictures um i don't say names i don't do anything so unless you personally know us um or hung out with us you don't know who i'm talking about and i really i really 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 like that because it eliminates that. If I feel like being a bitch, um, I can write a post and you don't know who I'm talking about. If I want to say something crazy off the wall, I can say it and you don't know who I'm talking about. And vice versa. So that eliminates a lot of it. Another reason why I say it's good to be private in the sense of no air all your business is because if you had those grimy, grimy ass females out there who will see a little crack in your relationship... Or see that you wrote a post and then say, okay, well, let me call such and such and let me see if I can hang with them because they like them, you know. So, just be careful with that kind of stuff. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth losing your relationship over he said, she said, or a misunderstanding. And that's how a lot of relationships do honestly mess up because it's a misunderstanding and people's pride is getting away. So, in order to really have a successful relationship, you have to put your pride aside. You have to be able to say sorry. And that's something else that I do really um, believe in is to apologize. You know, admit when you're wrong sometimes or take the initiative to say, because um, I have a habit of, if you say I'm gone, I'd be like, deuces, bye. I don't look behind you to see if you close the door, no nothing. I'd be like, okay, bye. One thing that I do like is that a person, when I get into my moves where I'm not going to chase you, I'm not going to baby you, I'm not going to run behind you, I do want somebody who's going to fight for me. Not fight me, but fight for me, which means that if I say um, deuces, you may walk out the door, but five minutes later you come back in the door and saying, okay, kid, look. Or you outside and tell me to come outside or something like that. I prefer that because then to me it tells me that you want to be here. You know what I'm saying? Um, or when we're mad at each other, we can still sleep together, like, in the same room. But to, just to let y'all know, when I'm mad, when, when I'm mad at her, I sleep so close to the edge of the bed, and I'd be like, you better not touch me. And in my head, I'd be like, oh, she better not touch me. She touched me. I'm going off. You know what I'm saying? And she knows that. And I know that if I make her mad, normally I could kind of baby a person or whatever. But she ignores me you know what i'm saying and um, i'm not used to that so that's a pro that's, that's a plus because in in the sense of how we deal with our anger or our issues we're completely different but we in a way it works for us so you know when i'm mad and she knows that i'm mad at her she will go into her own little area she'll go into her own area and leave me alone and if she's mad at me i know she just be cool <laughs> You know, just be quiet or if I feel like, okay, I don't necessarily know what I want to know. Of course, I'm going to be a little baby, be a little cute and eventually we're warm with each other. So that's a, that's another thing that I would say. Um, another thing is to spice up your relationship. You know, keep yourself looking nice regardless if your partner isn't always the best dressed or put that much effort in how they look. You have to keep yourself up. You have to do little stuff. Um have lingerie, have at least one pair of sexy heels, change your hair up, change your makeup, um, perfume, do something, do something crazy, you know, adventurous, um, in the bedroom and just in the relationship, do something spicy, if a song come on and y'all know that's y'all, freak them song, you know, in the club, kind of freak them, you know, freak it out a little bit in the club, uh, freak it out a little bit in the club, or, Dance with somebody else, not to where if you know that person is jealous, don't 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 do that. But you know, um, do a little stuff that you know that's different. Spice it up. Um, something as far as y'all eating together, incorporate feeding each other. Um, if you're kissing and you normally just pack or do a little, mm, you know, try kissing for a whole minute, nonstop, two minutes, nonstop, because kissing is very sensual. So why not kiss more? Um, Something as simple as when you're sleeping, instead of having your own side of the bed, cuddle more, 
hug each other more, um, caress each other, instead of having sex, turn each other on to the max and just don't have sex. Just foreplay the entire time. Little things like that spice up a relationship. Um, being honest, you know what I'm saying? To me, that's the sexiest thing that my girlfriend has. It's the fact that she is honest with me. Um, she's honest. And that's so sexy to me because I know that I can depend on her. You know what I'm saying? I know that if I tell her, hey, can you pick me up at such and such? I need to be such and such. Oh, my God, this didn't come through. Can you do this for me? That's sexy. That's like a turn on because I can call her at any time of the night and know that she's going to say, okay, Kia, I got you. And I know sometimes it makes her mad, but I, I love that. You know what I'm saying? So when you look for a partner, male or female, gay or straight, look for someone that compliments you. Not necessarily saying, oh, my God, you look nice today, but kind of compliment you in the sense of what you want to do, where you want to go, compliment you. And another thing is a person who notices things about you. When I tell you, oh, my earring keeps flipping over. Sorry. Um, one, another thing that just turns me on and gets on my nerve is that she notices things about me. So, for instance, my eyebrows. Um, she knows when I cut them. Or when I when I stop, you know, when I stop cutting them, or she notices, literally like the smallest things, and I'd be like, th "Oh, thank you." You know what I'm saying? So I'm so used to it now that I look look I look for her to notice. So now now it excites me to do different things because she notices it. So now it's exciting to me because. <clears throat> I want to now, I want to change something. Or I want to do little things out of place to say, hmm, I wonder if she's still on her A game. Because we've been together for two years. So I'm not going to lie. We have become a little boring. Um, but that's because now we're both so busy. You know, working in school full time. And me trying to get my business started. We Sometimes we don't have time to just sit around like we used to do. So when we do actually get a time to sit around, we sleeping, we're up on each other, we're kissing, and we're trying to do little things to keep the relationship from being boring or routine, because I, I hate routine relationships. But, um, yeah, so just anything. You don't have to have the most money in the world because we're far from rich. You know, we're, everybody's struggling right now. But it's always good to do little things. Like I said, if you have a partner that I could say be, I, I call it all up in your business, Try to change little stuff about it. Um, clean up if if you if your partner is the breadwinner, clean up. Uh, one day out of a week, have them come home and you have a full course dinner, and you got on lingerie, or take showers together, take baths, and I don't mean just have sex. You know, oh we gonna no take a sensual bath together. Like genuinely take the time to appreciate each other because sex. Being with somebody for two years, sex is going to be the bomb. It's going to be, oh, my God, I need a quickie. It's going to be all that stuff. So sex is pretty much going to be played out. So when you relationship with somebody for a long time, you have to understand that what's more important is the, is the time that y'all spend together. And with us, we try to do more things that are sensual, you know, like long kisses and if my back hurts or I be on the phone on break and, and she says my back hurts, so I say, my, oh, my back hurt. You know what I'm saying? Surprisingly, I could go to sleep. I could take a shower and get a back rub. You know what I'm saying? Things like that matter more to me than saying, oh, my back hurt. I come home and you want to give me sex. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sex is good, but if I'm telling you, oh, I had a bad day, I want you to try to make my day better. And vice versa, if I know that you had a rough day, I am not gonna you're not gonna come home and I'm gonna be bitching at you unless you really did something to where I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm gonna just put you in place. Cause I can be the sweetheart and I can be your worst nightmare. And trust me, she knows. <laughs> so it's just it's 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 comprom it's compromising with each other. That's the, that's another big thing. You have to compromise. If because see I fold my I, I hang on my stuff up and she folds her stuff. So we have to compromise when it comes to space, living together because we both are pretty much clean people, but you know, little things that we do differently. So my tips with the, to be in a relationship, to sum it all up, is to be honest, to compromise, to be 
more aware of the things that you're doing in a relationship because look to me honestly you will forgive a person for cheating on you you forgive a person for giving you a std you can forgive all that stuff but it's the little things if if you don't speak up about the little things the little things are gonna become bigger things and then the bigger things because that's is what's gonna break y'all up like if you honestly hate the fact that your partner Clips their toenails in the bed. Okay, and eventually you're going to be like, look, you need to stop doing this or I'm gone. So if you notice, it's really the little things in the relationship that breaks y'all up. You can forgive somebody for cheating, all that kind of stuff like that, which I said, I just said. But I don't understand that you can forgive them for the big things, but break up over the smallest things. Um, just really have communication in the relationship, is, which really, really, really important. Which That's the key. For real, for real. It's to be able to talk about what makes you upset. What What's something that your partner is doing that you don't like. If your partner is beginning to gain weight, let them know. You don't have to say, damn, you fat. Or you're not attracted to them no more. You can say, okay, baby, let's work out. You could be in the best of shape and I could be out of shape. Let's work out. Don't work out and you just completely leave me out there. No, we're going to work out together. If I know that, okay, hmm. I really, I'm really not liking your hair like this. You can say, I like your hair better the way you had it this way. You know what I'm saying? Compliment that person. Because when you start making a person feel like they're not sexy or one anymore, they're going to get that attention from someone else. And that's the last thing you want. So with me, I take her criticism well and she takes mine well. Yeah, it's some things that I do want her to change that she's not changing. But, I mean, some things with a person, they're just going to do what they want to do. And it's going to be hard to get a person out of their mind frame because she is older than me. But it's all about compromising. Once again, compromising with the person that you're with. Um, so, yeah, don't don't beat up the person physically or emotionally because that is terrible. I just feel like if we're going to be a couple, we need to support. We need to encourage each other, not beat each other down. Make sure they feel bad. You know what I'm saying? So, those little things have made my relationship really, really strong. And I'm just speaking from one. And I wish I could be more detailed, but this video was really random. But the conversation, I said, you know what? Let's, let me talk about it. My relationship, because that's what has been going on in my life for the last two years. So, yeah. Um, another thing is, right now, I'm more focused on my career. I have a five-year goal plan. I have a long-term and a short-term goal, and my girlfriend doesn't. So we have arguments. Well, not arguments, but conversations about that because I want her to be more driven, you know, in certain areas. But at the same time, she's really hardworking. She works super hard, and I've only had one, one nine-to-five. Nine to so we're pretty much living off of her income. So she's strong in that area. So, yeah, she's a provider in a sense of paying bills. But I'm stronger than her. You know what I'm saying? You don't want two headstrong people. You want to be with somebody who you can pull from, who you can learn from, who you can, who can grow with, who can you can take something from it. So um, that's why I think our relationship is good because she has things about her that inspire me, and I have things about me that inspire her. I can depend on her, and she can depend on me. Regardless of the age difference, you know what I'm saying, I am more educated on some areas than what she is. I'm more book smart. She's more street smart. So the situations, I avoid it because of her. She's like, don't do this. Don't do that. This is what that means. You know, if a song say some little fly stuff, and I'm like, what does it mean? She know what it means. You know, she's more street smart. And then if she has homework or, need, you know, issues or, you know, advice or need someone to talk to, I'm stronger in that area, and I, I, that's how I help her out. You know what I'm saying? So it's 50-50, and a lot of people be like, well, who's the guy, who's the girl? Look at her because of the way she dressed. She's not a stud. But they look at her and say, okay, she's obviously the guy. When I prefer a relationship to where there's no set, okay, you're the breadwinner, you're the guy, you run this. No. We're both passive aggressive. Certain areas, I already know she got it. You know what I'm saying? I know she can change a tire when it comes to her car. Just like that, she got all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So in certain areas, I know to sit back and look pretty 
and certain areas she know to sit back and look pretty. Because even though I am all girly on the outside, I'm really aggressive on the inside. So there is no set who's male or female role. It's 50-50. And that's what I appreciate about the relationship. I don't want somebody who's going to tell me what to do, when to do it, how to do it. No. I'm type B personality. You know, I want somebody who's a type B. Or, like, I'm a type B, but I like to be organized. I like to be planned. Like I said, I have a five-year goal plan. So even though my stuff may be messy at times, I'm really organized. I can sit here and tell you what I want, how to do it, etc. So... Like I said, it's really about finding a person who compliments you. To sum this video up, find a person who compliments you, what you want, what you look for, and what you're aiming to get in the future. And once you get that, you can have a successful relationship. The first step is to know your partner. Know your partner, not just saying, um, oh, well, I know her, his or her favorite color. No. I know that it, by certain times, like certain, the way her voice sounds. If something's wrong, you know what I'm saying? I could tell um, certain things that she does, if she has, you know, if she's having a good day, if she's having a bad day. I can, shit, hell, I can tell when she got somebody to talk to her today. You know what I'm saying? And I let she be like, well, how'd she know that? Because plenty of times I'd be like, well, did you meet anybody at school today? She'd be like, yeah. And it'd just be random. You know what I'm saying? I know her so well, and she knows me so well. You know what I'm saying? So... It makes it a lot easier because we know each other. So when we go out, I know what's expected of her. She knows what's expected of me. Um, certain situations we know. But anyways, you guys, this video is long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, stay tuned to my channels more often. And follow me on Twitter at lady underscore lady 89. Bye.